All right, why don't we uh, go ahead and get going. Uh, my name is Rob Hanley. And before we start, I have the privilege to announce uh, our winner of, uh, from yesterday, the winner of $1,000. Uh, and the winner's name is Jean-Pierre Lacroix. Uh, you can reach out to Shiloh uh, Lucen to uh, coordinate uh, the reception of that, uh, that lovely prize. That's a lot of pizzas. So uh, congratulations, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, my, na my name is Rob Hanlon. Uh, I'm the CEO of Cyber Money. It's a merchant first uh, payment platform and private label payment engine. Cyber Money was originally built a few years ago and, and has been rigorously strengthened in anticipation of a market transformation. We've embraced the narrative, we serve consumers by serving merchants. I wanna share with you why I believe this is the right strategy for the payments market. We will explore changing consumer perspectives and merchant pain points through the lens of another industry that experienced similar transformation impacting influence, power, and economics. I'm new to the payments industry uh, after spending 15 years as a technology executive in private label food. So I'm thrilled to be part of this exciting era in a highly innovative market that is fundamentally changing the way we live every day. I saw a private label explode uh, from a generic. Remember generic food, that kind of white can with a black label on it that said corn. And when you opened it, it kind of had corn in it, but you, know, you never knew. So, so from that generic to a highly profitable and sophisticated retailer product strategy with estimated sales over 150 billion annually in the US alone. The growth of private label wasn't just about the retailer's label. Changing the label is the easy part. Every formula innovation responds to a changing consumer priority. Every impact to cost and value, every move to a high-end product focused on a specialized consumer segment was delivered by the retailer. Strengthening trust with the consumer, shaping the retailer as a change agent, raising the status of the retailer to an innovator, and ultimately shifting power of a market from a branded market maker a branded food manufacturer, to the grocery retailer. The transformation of the food marketplace shifted influence, power, and profitability to the retailer. It's motivated or was motivated by the consumer's belief that the retailer was more responsive, agile, and aligned to their needs. So several factors, I believe, served as a catalyst for this transformational shift I actually see today in the payments ecosystem. So for this discussion, let's simplify the ecosystem into three broad groups, consumers, payment market makers, and merchants. So I wanna share my thoughts on similar conditions and behaviors I see today in payments that reminds me of what I experienced in private label foods. Today, consumers expect to be compensated for using a payment card, just like the incentive a consumer needed to buy a retailer branded product. Today, the rising generation of consumers have different priorities than many of us, just like the younger consumers expected common purpose and better for you products that dominate the food marketplace today. Today, payment market makers incent consumers to utilize their payment rail through loyalty programs and additional services funded by merchants, just like grocery retailers expected trade promotion investments for manufacturers. And today, Merchants are experiencing margin pressures, and they're incenting consumers to change payment methods that favor merchant costs, very similar to the margin pressures we saw in food retail. The current merchant strategy of offering incentives to influence choice is not new. Debit cards have been around for years, and we've all seen merchants offer cash only in our personal experiences. So will merchant incentives be enough to motivate consumers to change? And will that change be sticky and result in a long-term behavioral shift? I believe more than incentives are required for consumers to change their payment choice. So what are the other market characteristics and pain points and service offerings that can motivate transformation? I look to my experience for specific signals that indicate lasting transformation is not only possible, excuse me, but also here in a highly innovative payment space. Three macro themes I see today 
are the changing consumer perspectives that create disconnects with existing market makers. A market maker's low agility to respond to all the changing forces out there and increasing merchant pain points, pressured margins and strong connection to consumers. What market dynamics that I see in private label that I believe are connected to these three macro themes? Let's start with consumers. The power of consumer choice and its ability to shift market forces. Focus on the greater good, common purpose and aligned priorities where they spend their money. And the rising generations changing expectations. Then if we look to the branded market makers, low agility, and slow response to rapidly changing market conditions. Very low barriers today for new competitive entrants into the market. A market that attracts significant outside investment for innovation. An economic inequality in market participation, followed by the slow pace of innovation of highly governed corporate environments. Now, if we shift lastly to retailers, the power of re relationship the retailers have with consumers who come into their place every day. The disruption of omni-channel commerce and shopping that we've all experienced. And the changing relationship between retailers and branded payment mar market makers. There's little doubt that consumer choice moves markets. So what were the characteristics important to consumers that retailers were able to spot, respond to faster than branded market makers that permanently change the ecosystem? Well, lower product costs that can be customized for premium or value affiliation, the responsiveness by the retailer consumer needs, rapid retailer innovation, the tangible connection that consumers feel for certain retailers, and the ability of retailers to serve all consumer segments, including the underserved. Focus on regulation controls and transparency, that increases consumer confidence. The belief that retailers listen and empathize with their consumers. An experience that creates common purpose and connectedness. An ability for retailers to be responsive and change as fast as consumer needs. The fact that products are available and affordable for all, trusted and at a fair price. The belief that the retailer better understands consumer needs. And lastly, this, this, I guess I call it a sense of community that's fostered between retailers and consumers. People feel that connection. So I believe retailers were motivated and they were closer to the consumer to connect and create intimacy that aligned to those consumer needs and motivated the tectonic shifts in the market. The challenge in connecting to consumers is the ability to understand and respond to those changing priorities, especially the rising generation of consumers. So let's look across the generational segments and co the commonly suggested priorities for those groups. So let's start with Gen Xers, born in the 60s to the early 80s. You know, they're, they're kind of rebellious, um, self-reliant, but they have a, a, a mistrust of large institutions. The Gen Yers, kind of born from the 80s to the mid 90s, those are children of recession. They've struggled financially and they expect multiple offerings and alternatives to support their power of choice. The Gen Zers, they were born shortly after the turn of the century and have grown up in a mobile culture. They're increasingly racially diverse, socially active, and they use their economic influence to enforce their beliefs. And then lastly, just to kind of this newer group, right? The Gen Alphas, I'd say recently born kind of after 2013 and, and well into the future, that are even more diverse than the Gen Zers, they're actually gonna experience even a greater degree of economic inequality, in addition to demonstrating most of the characteristics seen in previous generations. So in order for payment players to respond to a changing market and establish themselves as an agent of change leading transformation, we need to critically think and think through and understand a couple of things. First, what are the characteristics and perceptions of the consumer that could accelerate the velocity of transformation in payments? And then lastly, what do the fundamental characteristics of the current payments market and the pain points of merchants signal in an environment ready for change? I started this presentation by saying I'm new to the payment space. 
uh, which affords me an unfiltered perspective. It's not limited by past experience of uh, what was or what isn't possible. So here's what I see based on my experience in a different industry that had massive growth and shifting market powers that I believe signals payments are both ready for transformation and will reward those that respond rapidly to market shifts. I think first, the consumer's expectation to be compensated for using a payment platform and the ease at which they can shift between competitive card offerings, that motivates higher investment in loyalty programs driving up industry costs. Secondly, cost to serve for payments. They're pressuring mer merchants and their margins, creating dissatisfaction with payment platforms and motivating merchants to incent consumers to move to lower cost options. Increasing fraud and defaults on payment increases market costs and erodes consumer confidence. I think lagging participation of the underbanked and non-banked motivated by this eroding trust of institutions and current platforms lacking ability to connect, make a connection and build a connection there. Consumers' reliance on debt has become a life burden. You know, that's recently signaled by consumers using the stimulus to pay down their card debt. The explosion of P2P payments, mobile payments, and digital wallets. Growing investment today in online banking and the high velocity of innovation and payments fairly active investment community. And lastly, growing EBT fraud that prevents the full intended benefit from reaching those most in need and the growing focus on digital and mobile platforms as a solution to that long lasting challenge. So given the market, the current market condition forces of between consumers, payment market makers and merchants, in addition to the characteristics I see in the payments ecosystem, I believe the environment is highly fertile for innovation that puts the merchant first, empowers merchant agility, and allows the merchant to be responsive to create connection and intimacy with customers. That's the foundational principle of cyber money. Cyber money's vision and purpose is to offer consumers choice aligned to their changing priorities and merchant pain points. Cyber money is focused on being a merchant first omni-channel digital cash payment platform that offers card alternative payment choice for consumers at a much lower cost for merchants. Cyber money will create a Velcro effect between consumers and merchants aligning consumer priorities and a merchant's desire for improved margins. Cyber money is a platform that is connected and embedded in a merchant's business. We've heard that theme over and over again in this conference. If you look to the left-hand side of the slide, you see the pain points of merchants and the concerns of consumers. You see a payments partner stack that places the merchant last and disintermediates the relationship between the consumer and the merchant. If you look to the right-hand side of the slide, cyber money intends to disrupt this current dynamic by addressing merchant pain points and responding to consumer concerns. The vision and roadmap for cyber money is responsive and aware and looking and excited to the coming market transformation. It is 100% aligned and embedded within the Federal Reserve banking system. It's secure and puts the consumer in control of privacy. Cyber money embraces the underbanked and provides trusted connection. Cyber money serves as a catalyst for consumers to reduce their credit card debt. Cyber money guarantees merchant payment and returns control and management of disputes back to the merchant. It's transparent with its usage costs for the merchant, and it's a low cost provider for payment transaction services. Cyber money can also serve as a private label payment engine that can be embedded in a merchant's point of sale system, e-commerce platform, mobile application, or a standalone payment platform which advances the merchant's brand power and consumer influence. And lastly, you know, we maintain or cyber money maintains and continues to cultivate relationships with some of the largest payment manufa uh, equipment manufacturers out there, merchant solution providers and merchants in the US and abroad. Our partners will win with us as cyber money forges through this new frontier, disrupting current market forces, 
and focusing on merchant profitability, enabling them to strengthen their natural connection with their consumers. My desire today was to create a compelling narrative that historic transformation seen in other industries shines a light on the path for payment transformation. And it highlights the signals that motivate tectonic shifts in the payment marketplace yet to come. This will be motivated by merchant pain point consumer choice. So the ability to understand and respond to those changing priorities of the consumers, especially the rising generation consumers is the key to future transformation. So thank you for letting me take some time to share our story with you, to discuss some of these changing uh, uh, dynamics of the rising generation and to just uh, introduce you to cyber money. So with that, we'll take some questions. I'm gonna kind of go to the QA and see what's there. So pardon me as I jump around a little bit. Uh, bear with me. So somebody asked if I will be talking about the social marketplaces and how payment is integrated within their platforms. Uh, we are not going to cover. We we're not going to cover that today. But if, if we think about it a little bit, and cyber money as this payment engine, there's absolutely no reason via our API architecture why that could not take place. But I think there, it's a little different. We think about the generations trust of the rising generations trust of that. I think it's a requirement. Um, you know, if we think about if I think about what my kids do, right? I'm not a young guy. I, you know, I got a got a little bit going here. We got to keep it in. But my kids. That's what they do, right? They are completely 100% mobile enabled and mobile trusted. And so I, I think that is, is definitely part of the equation. That's, that's a really good question. So that's all the time we have. I wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, congratulations to um, our winners of the, uh, our winner, I guess, of the thousand dollars. That's awesome. Have a great time. Enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you for joining us. Bye now. <laughs>